Hey, what's up guys? So today's video, I'm taking you on a bit of an adventure first. We're going to pick up a Belltech uh, lowering kit, but just for the rear. This guy only has half the kit. So we're gonna go pick it up because he's just looking to unload it, but it should be a pretty good price and we'll be able to at least lower half the vehicle. We'll have to figure out what we're gonna do for the front next. So I'm just waiting to meet up with the dude for the Belltech rear lowering kit and check out this little girl is just sitting here. This thing just pulled up. It's like an old single cab, maybe sport model it looks like. You don't really see these kick around too much. These second gens are become a little more obsolete, at least in the gas ones. All right, check out this RT. This one is sick. So that's what mine should sit like, is something like that. And he took off the brackets because the guy originally, when he bought it, it didn't, it was only lower in the back, but not in the front. So he took off the kit on the back. It had that Cali lean on it. But he's got 255, uh, 55, 55 or 50, 55 on there. So he's got the Federals, but I'm kind of liking the way that looks. So he was showing me some pictures of what he had on. So here's the Belltech uh, rear brackets that we're going to pick up off them. And this should lower it like four inches, maybe? I think it's like three or four inches. I'm so, sure, but it's six. Drops it. Yeah, so we'll see. It's going to be probably three, four inches on it. We need to pick up some hardware, but. No big deal, and then we'll have to get some drop springs for the front. All right, so we're back. We got the brackets. So let's go inside to the garage. We're not gonna be working on this today, but I just wanna show you guys we at least got them. And right now, I'm gonna have to move this ladder. Sorry, I'm just doing a couple things all at once. We got mods everywhere. We still got the headers. I'm gonna be working on the calipers. So I'll do a separate complete video on fixing that for you guys. So it'll just be a dedicated video, but I'm gonna get into it. I'll kind of show you just a summary of it. And then there'll be a very specific video on how I got that done. I have the stuff to fix it right here. It just showed up from Amazon. All right, you guys. So I've got the Healy coil thing set up. So we've got the drill with the drill bit and I'm drilling it. We just finished drilling these out with a little bit of PB blaster for some lubricant. Now I've got the tap for the Healy coil. I'm gonna tap those through from the back side, which is the direction that the Healy coil is gonna get inserted. And we uh, should be back in business here, hopefully, which is the plan, but I'll have a very specific video for this on you guys that kind of just direct and to the point that you guys can catch on the channel as well. So here's where we're at. We have threads, you guys. So the threads are in here. We were just messing around with the Healy coil kit. We drilled it, we tapped it. Now we have threads. I'm gonna finish the passenger side and then we put these calipers and wheels back on. Okay, you guys. So just like that, again, I'll have this in a separate video, but we have threads. We are good to go. So the Healy coils are all in. This was the only one that was still good. So we have the good remaining one set of threads but the rest of them are all done both sides. We have red Loctite on the outside of the Healy coil too so that the Healy coil stays in place. Also have Loctite on this. Let's go ahead and put our rotors back on, our calipers back on, and we can put this truck back on the ground and we can start driving it again. One thing I did want to show you is because this uh, had oversized tires on it, it actually grabbed some of the sheet metal on the inner fender here. So it peeled it up. I just started to kind of pull it back down. So I want to pull it down because there was some dirt and stuff trapped in there. Pull it down, back down. At some point I might just hit it with some blue paint just to kind of make it all the same, but I at least want to straighten this out. So I'm just fixing it with a pair of channel locks. No big deal, but we'll straighten it out so it's where it should be. So maybe not perfect, but definitely better than it was. Once you get some blue paint back on there, you'll never notice anything. And I'm gonna kind of keep the blue paint theme under here since most of it's pretty shiny and pretty nice looking once I kind of scrubbed it up. So. Now we can go ahead, put our calipers on, put our rotors on first, put the calipers back on, put the wheels on, put her on the ground.
this video be without a test drive? So let's go ahead and see if our brakes are gonna fall off again. You might say I don't have a radio, but we got Bluetooth in this girl. Woo! This is probably honestly better than the stock stereo, so wait till we hear it. All right, so, so far so good. I just gotta be careful on the brakes that I want my speaker, my sound system to go flying. But any bumps that we've hit, no rattles, the brakes seem to be solid. I mean, as solid as they're gonna be for this old truck, it's not really the best of brakes, but we'll probably upgrade the brakes at some point. But so far, brakes are working good, and I think we solved the issue, because I don't have any rattles in the front end right now. Okay, so over any bumps, we don't got any noise out of the front end, which is good, but there's something in the steering column, like inside of the truck that it's either worn out or loose, like. I don't know if you guys can hear that. That noise, when you hit a bump, it's like rattling inside here somewhere. So, not a huge deal, but it's the only other noise that I have. But other than that, it's pretty good. So we drove about half an hour doing our Costco run, and so far so good. The truck looks really good out in normal lighting. I know you guys have been looking at it underneath the fluorescent lighting in the shop, but, and then underneath, I'm happy to report that at the moment, we don't have any leaks. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a transmission pan. There's no leaks off the bottom of this truck right now. So for now, we're good for leaks. Everything's looking good. Headlights look good. Now I gotta try and load up all my groceries in this bitty truck. Okay, we got the groceries in the back. Groceries in the front, it's getting dark. Let's get out of here. So it's not to the floor because I don't want to lose my groceries, but she's okay. It's not like crazy fast. Here's to the floor. It's not fast by any means. So half of the lights on the dash are definitely burnt out. Cruise control works though. We're cruising along. And then the other thing that doesn't work is the gear selector indicator. It says I'm in reverse right now. I don't think I'm in reverse, but I could be wrong. And we are back from our first successful test drive. I don't know about you guys, but this thing sounds mean. had a much better day with the truck today than we have in past days didn't have any issues all the smoking has gone away all the dripping seems to have gone away doesn't like if you guys remember the one of the first videos there was like smoke coming up out of here dripping off the back of the engine somewhere from the valve covers the pcv all that stuff so no smoke no smells and just double checking the transmission after about an hour of driving and it doesn't appear that we have any leaks, so. Yep, we're bone dry again. So we're good, you guys. This truck is finally leak free, even though oil pan doesn't have anything, nothing. So we're in good shape, I would say. So we did it, you guys. Um, not that it's a huge accomplishment, but at least we got the truck to stop leaking. It seems to be running okay, and now we can start on the fun stuff. A couple other things that we do have to talk about. So you guys know at this point that we did pick up the Belltech shackle kit. So this is kind of a weird thing and those of you guys are more familiar with Dakotas or building Dakotas might know the answer to this. So if you go on Belltech's website, it'll say that these shackles or this shackle kit is one of their biggest drop kits. So it goes and it gives you a range. It says depending on the application, it could be anywhere between two inch drop and four inch drop. So on the Dakota RTs, they are lowered from the factory just slightly. So I believe it's one inch in the front and I'm not sure exactly in the back, but I know it's it's lower. So that's because of the factory springs are one inch lower in the front. And I believe on the back, they have a different leaf spring. So if I were to take a guess and on Beltec's website, they don't really say, I would say that it's gonna be on the bigger end of the lowering kit meaning that I think we'll be able to chop out about four inches of that ride height in the rear. So that's the plan, chop out four inches in the back of that. Um, it'll look way, way better, but we have to come up with a solution for the front. So if we lower the rear of the truck four inches, supposedly, and maybe somebody in the comments can confirm it. If we lower the rear four inches, 
I have to find a set of springs for the front. They don't sell or make drop spindles that I'm aware of that I kind of did my quick research on. We have to do it with springs in the front. So there's either a one inch lowering spring, a two inch lowering spring, or a three inch lowering spring for the front. So I'm thinking we drop the rear four inches, drop the front three inches, and that should get us sitting decent. But as always, let me know if you guys have any different suggestions. At this point, obviously it looks like we have the Bell Tech kit for the rear. So the rear should drop and sit a lot nicer. Now we gotta figure out what to do with the front. So should I go ahead and get the three inch springs? Or if you guys see four inch lowering springs for the front, drop a link in the comments below. That way I can go check them out, but that's kind of where we're at at this point. And another question for you guys, but let me flip this around quick. So we did a poll yesterday and I wanted to find out whether you guys wanted to run the, the truck down the drag strip, probably the eighth mile, honestly, because it's a little bit easier to get to and they run more frequently. But if we should run the truck in the eighth mile, just bone stock, or if we should put the headers on where am I pointing? Put the headers on first before we, we run it. So that's up to you guys. Or what else we could do is zero to 60s. So that might be a, a fun and easier way to kind of test this thing more frequently. Cause I, you know, I'll go to the track, I don't mind, but obviously it's a bit more of a mission to get to the track every time we change something. So if you guys are using any like cool zero to 60 calculators or apps on your phones, let me know. I haven't really downloaded one or looked into one, but Maybe that's another way is we can use some zero to 60 apps on the phone. See, you know, we can use that as a reference point to test because that would be fairly easy to just sit there and do a zero to 60 test every time we want to, you know, test out what benefit the mod made. So, and as far as other stuff that we need to talk about, if you guys check out below, I mentioned in another video, you'll see cheap Teespring shirts. So I'm giving those out to you guys. I'm not making anything off them. So they're super cheap. So you guys can get yourself a boosted motorsports tee and they're like 12 bucks or something. So check in the links below to the Teespring uh, store. You can go there, you can get just the basic boosted motorsports tee for like 12 bucks. Or if you guys wanna get fancy, you can get the you know premium version, but at least you can get yourself a tee for cheap. And I'm gonna be, I guess, launching the Patreon here shortly. So we'll be talking about that. You're gonna get uh, a few benefits and perks if you sign up for that. So you end up getting a team boosted uh, sticker for your truck or wherever you wanna put it. You also get discounts on clothing and we're going to have a separate kind of live chat that we're gonna do on the team boosted uh, Patreon or premium subscription on YouTube. So if you guys wanna kinda of get a little bit more one-on-one -on -one with me, talk about trucks, talk about cars, talk about your build, and maybe I can get involved in some of your builds, that's what I'm gonna do, cause I like helping everybody, but sometimes just I'm a one-man show, so it's a little bit hard to get to everybody's questions. I do my best, but uh, I think this is gonna be a cool feature that we're gonna be able to use on YouTube. So I'm happy to bring that to you guys as well. But anyways, if you like this video and this update, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, leave me your comments below on what you think we should do next, cause we got headers here, we got that um, Diablo tuner that we can try out, and we got a few things that we can test out on the truck and start playing with stuff. Also, I'm going to be getting an E-fan for the truck, so we'll be eliminating the clutch fan here pretty soon. I just gotta go ahead and order that. So, lots of stuff happening. We're moving quickly, so hopefully you guys are keeping up. Make sure you hit that subscription button and turn on your post notifications, that little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you're notified of all latest videos and you guys don't miss out. Anyways, see you in the next one, take care.